Okay, this is going to be a very long video, so let's just jump right in. I just finished uh, painting the helmet and jersey logos on all 42, well, 41 technically, one was already finished, of these uh, custom Pittsburgh Steelers uh, electric football figurines, the Fab Five figures. I've been working on these since November, and we're, we're, we're probably 90% finished with these now. All that's left is the uh, swoosh symbol on the yellow and white shoes, and uh, the... Uh, um, shoulder stripes and these will be ready to uh, seal but of course looks like most of these need some touch up on their green base plates where I've just been handling the figure so much uh, but there you go um, you can probably actually see this a little better without the light on but this camera won't stay in focus unless this light is on so uh, there it is on the uh, jersey as well these all aren't perfect and they were never going to be because of the human equation here. But uh, when you don't have enough helmet decals to uh, put on your entire team, uh, you develop techniques to do it yourself. That's kind of what I do. Um, very quickly, let me show you how I did this. Now, the uh, white circle on the helmet and on the jersey there was simply done with a toothpick. And it's not a matter of just dipping it down in the paint and going, boom, uh, because that would leave sort of a... Uh, like an ice cream cone tail sticking up off the uh, helmet. You don't want that. Uh, just a, a little uh, white acrylic paint and just kind of use the toothpick to draw the circle. On maybe five or six of these figures, I had to go back with some black paint or yellow paint, depending on where the logo is, and, and round it off a little bit to make it look more like a circle. These don't all look circular. did the very best I could. Um... But now as far as the, uh, the yellow, red, blue dots there that the simulate the stars and the black line there to simulate the word Steelers, I use some ultra fine point Sharpie markers. And let me just go ahead and take one of the uh, lids off here so you can see what we're dealing with. I'll try to get it up there against the white background there and then zoom in. There you go. And uh, that's how I'm able to get the such small detail. And we are talking millimeters here. Uh, so very quickly, let's just look at the uh, Jersey logo there. Now you can't always see the yellow. Now you can see the yellow dot on this one. Um, and hopefully under this light, you'll be able to see them. I did a great job on the helmet logo. Maybe not so great on the Jersey logo, but uh, again, that's about a millimeter, maybe two millimeters right there. From the uh, neck to the uh, uh, fist there. There's just not a lot of space there at all. So uh, all, all in all, I think I did a really good job on these. Um, even, from the, even from this distance, it looks really good. All right, we're three minutes in. Let's just, we got to move this on. Um, I was also going to do some spot check painting on these, but, you know, to see what needed to be repainted, like the corner of that base plate. But I, I think I'll do that at a later time. Let's just... Focus in. One of the things I'm checking here is to make sure I, I put all the uh, details on there. Uh, I am certain I put the yellow dot on all these, and you can't... Well, there you can see it. I did a great job on that jersey uh, logo. Uh, when you can't uh, afford this many um, uh, helmet logo decals and jersey, you know, decals of any sort, uh, this is what you do. And uh, it's, a, it's a great cost-cutting measure. It does take a little longer. I mean, I've been working on these since November, these figures. But very rewarding. Uh, the entire per point of this project was to see what I can do. And uh, I'm not disappointed with the results here. And again, I don't know that we can even see the yellow dot. Yeah, we can. There we go. This was an unnecessary detail that, you know, I just happened to notice in some photos that are on all Steelers uniforms these days. So I thought, well, let's just try to do it. I'm having a hard time getting the helmet logo. There we go. Not bad at all. And it is, it's not a matter of simply taking the point of the Sharpie markers and just, just going pop. And getting it. Uh, sometimes you have to uh, move the thing around just a little bit to get the ink to come out of the felt. Because, you know, acrylic 
painted acrylic is not really a, a conducive surface for magic marker. So sometimes it's it's not as straightforward as it might look at first. Okay, and sometimes I went out of the line, so to speak. I went beyond the circle. We're just going to have to uh, deal with that. We're just going to have to, you know, even from there it's hard to tell. But, uh, gosh, uh, there we go. Sometimes you have to turn this odd ways to get to see the, the logo. Not bad at all. All right. I have to stack these a weird way to get them all, um, to, uh, fit in each of those little, uh, compartments. Okay. That time the, the black line got a little close to the blue star on the jersey there. That's, that's all right. Uh, much better on the helmet. Yeah. And from some distance, I mean, you wouldn't even be able to tell that's not a decal. So I'm pretty proud of this. Uh, and you know, once I finally uh, managed the time to sit down and do it, uh, I'd say altogether, I had to take frequent breaks, but altogether it took no more than two hours to, you know, paint the circles with the toothpick and then use the Sharpies to uh, put in the stars in the line. Again, I feel like I got the black line too close to the blue star, but that's not bad at all. That one looks even better. Okay. Got such tiny scales. Um, fine detail is a lot to hope for. Sometimes, uh, oops, I hit the uh, tripod with my leg. That caused me to lose my train of thought. That one looks pretty good. Yeah, not bad at all. Okay. But anyway, this video will be quality control to make sure that I painted these completely. Didn't leave any dots out. And uh, also, maybe on playback, I'll see elements on each of these figures that need to be touched up with some paint. I know there's one helmet on one of these figures somewhere that's going to need a little more paint. Ooh, not bad at all. Not bad. I'm not sure... These uh, jersey uh, details is something I would uh, probably ever do in the future. The uh, jersey logo. Now, here's the one that's already complete. This was the first one that I, I mocked up. So You can see that this one actually looks a little rougher than the later efforts. But that's what the completed... All I've got lacked now is the the swoosh on the shoes of the ones that don't have black shoes and the uh, shoulder stripes there. And of course the face masks and the uh, uh, decals on the, the, the Jersey. And uh, so there's no lead. There's no time frame on when this is going to get done. This was just such a huge step that I thought was going to take forever and it ended up only taking a couple of hours altogether. Um, I'll move on to these Lyman figures. These were a little trickier on the jerseys. I'll show you in just a moment. Having a hard time focusing in on that one. Look how close the... Uh, not a lot of room there between the neck and the uh, glove or the uh, hand. I put that... And I, I position these jersey... Uh, logos in such a manner as that they shouldn't impede with the placement of the uh, uh, jersey decal, the number decal. I hope not. You know, I made those as small as I could. It should be fine. We'll find that out, though, in the weeks to come. There we go. Finally got a good look at that one. Okay.
what a journey it's been with these figures. These began as unpainted figures. I made a video several months ago about priming and, and trimming flash, and that's where it all began. Right? Yeah. But, uh, like I said, the entire point of this project was to see what I could do. How much detail could I add to these uh, archaic, and I hate to use that word because I think these are still fine, uh, Tudor Fab Five figures. I think these are in some ways less problematic than the more modern figures with the more realistic designs. Especially when customizing. These are much easier to paint than the Mean 13 figures. And, uh, and infinitely easier to paint than figures with a lot of detail on the, um, the molds themselves. Um, especially when it comes to the feet there. It's a little easier to... Uh, of course, you know, a lot of the newer figures come unassembled and you would actually glue to the base plate. So that's not much of an issue. That looks good. Not always perfect circles. But, you know, that's two or three millimeters right there. Maybe not even that. Uh, all right. Unfortunately, the uh, identifying numbers on the bottom of these are beginning to wear off on each of the figures, so that could be a problem down the road. I've got a sheet of paper here. It tells me who's who. You know, it just might take a little longer to cross-reference this to figure out uh, what number to put on which figure, but that's not too big an issue. Okay. I was worried that the yellow dot would not show up on the camera here, but it, you can see most of these if I zoom in tight enough. Alright. Oh, keep hitting the camera there, the tripod. There we go. Yep, it's there. There we go. Okay. Well, I've already done this one. Oh, that one looks good. Uh, again, I got the uh, Steelers, the, the black line, too close to the blue dot, the blue star. Uh, the only way to fix that would be to just paint over it with yellow and then just try again and and at this point, you know, even from this distance, well, you know, from this distance, you can't even hardly see it with the light, the strong light. The helmet logo looks terrific. Okay. That's a little flat on top. Like I said, these all aren't perfect circles. That one's much better. And let's see if we can see. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, of course, when compared to a, a, a decal logo, these don't uh, hold up as well. Um, now, when compared with some of the hand-painted Tudor figures from the 90s before they started putting stamps on the helmet. Um, this is actually quite good. Oh, that one's pretty good. And when you're on a budget and when you've committed to see how much of a figure you can hand-paint yourself, uh, it's quite nice. You know, the Sharpie markers... Um, Excellent for very, very fine detail. However, um, it takes a lot longer for Sharpie marker ink to dry 
than acrylic paints. And I'm talking days. Uh, we'll get that one figure back out and I'll show you what I mean. Pretty good. I went out beyond the circle. It would have been nice if I could have somehow put the black background around the white circle there on the jersey, because that would that, that's basically a, what it looks like on the actual uniform. Um, the only way I would have been able to accomplish that would either have been taking a sharpie marker and drawing a circle around it, and it would have been too thick. Even that ultra fine point, it would still be too thick. Or started with a black circle and then painted a, a, a slightly so, a smaller white circle on top of it to give it a black border. And it would probably still been too thick and, and stuck out too much. And remember, uh, space is at a premium here because we have to accommodate the jersey number, the decal for that. Okay, now let me uh, show you why it's important to uh, allow these figures to dry. Oh. Uh, I can't be too picky about that right now. Time is of the essence. We've got here... This is the mock-up figure that I did, you know, within the span of two or three hours. Uh, just so I could give myself a reference of what I wanted all these figures to look like. I didn't let the paint dry long enough before I sealed it, much less the uh, ink. So as you can see there on the, uh, well, no, you can't because of the bright light. Let's uh, You might see that the shoes on this are kind of green, which I'm okay with because that simulates grass stains pretty well. But there's also a little running of that ink on the um, uh, shoulder stripes there. It's not too bad at all, but I should have let this dry longer before I applied the brush sealer. I just wanted to get one finished to, to showcase, and, well, it is important to let these things dry and before sealing them. Okay. Now we'll move on to the all-purpose figures. How are we doing on time here? Oh, we're fine. All right. I knew this was going to be a long upload. Okay. You know, I can't see the yellow dot on that one. There it is. It's there. Just faint. There it is. Yeah, it's there. Okay. Okay, no worries. Yeah, and at this point, I am going to have to rely on that list. I mean, this is number eight. This will be jersey number eight. That's still pretty apparent. But on some of these, it's really beginning to, to wear off. Okay. Yeah, I got the, uh, uh, the red dot too close to the yellow dot on that one. So that's a little abstract right there. But even from there, you can't tell. Uh, the helmet logo looks fine. I was actually going to break this video down into two parts. Uh, last night when I finished the um, the white circles, I was just going to upload that and talk about the technique, but there's nothing to it. Just take a toothpick and, and, and draw in the circle. Doesn't really take a whole lot of paint. Oh, um, that's again the, the the Steelers line is too close to the blue star, and yep, the yellow star is there. Okay, like I said, they they were never all going to be perfect. None of them are perfect. Okay, I can see with my own eyes, not even looking through the camera, that the red dot is there. I just can't... There we go. And, uh, oh yeah. That one looks good. That one looks much better than the previous one. Um, in future, I'm not sure I would put this detail on the, the figures. Uh, I'm not unhappy with the results. I just... Uh, it's kind of like the... the the name plates on the back of the jersey. Um, you know, something that makes certainly makes the figures look much more authentic. But uh, 
Well, I'll, actually, I'll let you know when I apply the, the front jersey decals. Not bad. Not too bad at all. All right. Not a, a very good circle, is it? But even from here, it looks fine. You know? Heck, even from there, it looks fine. It's just, you know... When we... Go inside here... <laughs> I didn't exactly get the correct proportions of the... Of the dots on that one, but... They're all there. As is the, uh... Black line. It's a little skewed... Yeah, this is really something you get one shot at, at doing, but if you mess it up and you're not satisfied and you just can't sleep and it weighs you down, just paint over it to try again. I will uh, share with you that I did one color at a time. That way I didn't have to keep opening and closing lids on these magic markers, which uh, actually can uh, break a pen if you're not careful, so that, that reduces the chance of that ever happening. Hard to... There we go. Ooh, that actually looks quite nice, the uh, helmet. Okay. Very good. So, in other words, uh, I went through every... All 41 of these figures that had... You know, the 42, actually, but one of them is already finished. I went through all 41 figures and just put on the yellow dots. And then I went back and put the red dot on all... Um, 41 figures, and then the blue dot, and then the black line. Yep. Okay. Again, not a perfect circle, but... I'm still pretty happy with this. I'm not certain I'll do a, a video on the swooshes. And the... Uh, shoulder stripes separately. I may just do a, a, a tutorial on fine details, which is what those are. Technically, these are also fine details. Okay, uh, if I can remind myself, it looks like this gentleman needs a little black paint on his helmet. If I'm not mistaken. We've moved on to the sprinter figures. There we go. Ooh, quite high. Now, see that little line that goes across the jersey there, that contour? That made this a little tricky on these sprinters. Well, if you're still watching this upload, I mean, I know this is kind of tedious after you see a few of these. You feel like you've seen them all. But if you're still watching this, uh, I appreciate it. And uh, I think I just hit 175 subs on this channel. That's pretty cool. Now, this is not a monetized channel. Uh, so subs and views and comments and engagement, that, that kind of stuff doesn't, doesn't mean much other than, you know, I appreciate the feedback. But, um... This is the most active electric football channel on YouTube, that's for certain. You know. For good or, or ill. For better or worse. Well, that one looks quite nice. Um, about the only other active channels right now are Brandon Sigers. He just did a great demonstration of a, a magnetic field cover. You should go check that out. Reginald Rutledge, is, uh, he's got several YouTube channels, but I think his MESN Sports is the one he's active on right now. Uh, there we go. Of course, Reg is, is more focused right now on stadium crafting and six-inch scale 
figures, plastic figures. Um, of course, he maintains footballfigure.net as well, which is uh, you know where my trumpet player came from and uh, all those game changer quarterbacks. Uh, beyond that, uh, there's a couple of electric football channels out there that I don't really follow for reasons. Um, I, I don't. I'm no longer subscribed to a couple of those again for reasons. Um, I can't attest for their content that they're uploading. Um, there we go. Now it looks like the the red dots is almost gone outside the border of the the white circle, but uh, again, even from here, doesn't seem that that crucial uh, an issue. Ooh, that's a nice helmet logo right there. Okay. Oh. I will say though, as you know, the weather gets even warmer and you know life starts to get back to normal. Uh, I certainly won't, be, and that's already begun. I, I'm not uploading videos every day anymore because there are real life concerns that take priority over this channel. Oh, that looks nice. Ooh, that looks incredible. That's probably the best jersey logo I've done. Um, I mean, it's technically not the right uh, positioning on all those, but I decided to go for cardinal points on these. Um, because any closer than that, it, you wouldn't have been able to tell what you were looking at. I know that from experience as well. Um, so this is a concession I make. Now back to uh, some tips on doing this. Can you do this with other teams' helmet logos? Well, it depends. Um, you certainly could with the Indianapolis Colts. You could use a Sharpie marker to draw the horseshoe. Uh, Cincinnati Bengals, you could use the black Sharpie marker to, to, to draw the uh, uh, tiger stripes. Um, I think the Eagles would be possible. Um, it's going to be... A little more difficult with um, uh, a dark helmet, for lack of a better way to to describe it, unless the uh, logo is inside a lighter border of some kind. Uh, I think the Dallas Cowboys star would be pretty easy to do with a Sharpie marker. Um... Of course, the uh, Browns helmet logo would be pretty simple, since they don't really have one. Uh, Washington would be very, very difficult, unless you're really good at drawing numbers at microscopic level. And even then, it wouldn't work. You know, they have the, the burgundy helmet with yellow numbers on it right now. So, no, this Sharpie marker probably wouldn't work uh, in that regard. Okay. Ooh, well, the, the circle itself is, is, is naff, but the dots and the line there are on point. Okay, and I can attribute a little of that to the fact that it's fabric, you know, or it's a simulating fabric. That sounds reasonable. Pretty good. Yeah, okay, and the, the yellow dot is there. I don't know if maybe on playback we'll be able to see it. You know, there's a, a spot on the helmet there, the corner of the helmet where it meets the, the eyebrow or whatever that is, where there needs to be some paint. But that's going to be covered up with a face mask. So I'm uh, not too concerned about that. I hope I don't sound too nonchalant with this. I mean, we're near the end here, and I, I don't want to lower my expectations. But in that particular case, I, I see no reason to, to go back in and paint that. Okay. That looks real good. Oh, there's another nice jersey logo. I don't think those are going to impede the, the decal. I mean, it didn't on our test figure. I'm not going to get them back out again. But All right, we've only got eight more to, to look at here. 
Okay, we're moving on to the um, runner figures, your cornerbacks and your uh, running backs. That's what I use them for. Some people use these for cornerback or quarter backs. Okay, this was probably the most challenging to do because of this right left arm sticking up out here. Uh, that, that one looks okay. I think we already saw the very worst one, which was that uh, sprinter figure. Or it might have been one of the all-purpose figures. Yep. That's number 87. Yeah. Pretty good. So that's probably right. Well, 87. Uh, yeah, I was running out of those extra Steelers decals. So some of these numbers might not correspond with NFL uh, um, numbered system. I think most of them do. For example, number 33 here is clearly a cornerback. Okay, it looks good. Huh. Well, the dots look okay. The red one's kind of faint, but it's there. The black line is... I've done better black lines, but... Yeah, nonetheless. It really would be nice if there's a black border around that circle, wouldn't it? It's just... You know, we're, it's too small to get any finer detail than that without a decal. Okay. Ooh, I think this figure looks really good. Look at that stripe. Look at that... Those white gloves with the black armbands. Yeah. And then a uh, pretty nice logo there. Now on this one, the, the black line for the word Steelers is a little close to the yellow dot. But still, that looks pretty good. Okay. But like I said, in future, I might reconsider putting the logo on the uh, the jersey. We'll just have to see. Uh, once we get all the decals on and the face mask on and have these things ready to uh, showcase. Okay. Oh, the, the blue dot's very close to the uh, black line there. It's not too bad. And even from here, well, the good news is, even from here, you can tell quickly which team this is supposed to be, even though they're not in their standard uniform. All right. I'm actually sitting here trying to think of teams. Well, Chicago would be impossible to do with a Sharpie marker, but we know my technique for the Bears' C is to just draw a football shape with the orange paint, then go back in with the dark blue paint, and fill in most of that football, leaving just the outline of it. You could do the exact same thing with the Indianapolis Colts horseshoe. Uh, just draw a, uh, a, a blue uh, concave shape like this, and then go back in with white paint and uh, hollow it out, so to speak. It would look pretty good. Or a blue Sharpie marker, whatever is convenient for you. Yeah, all right. Okay. I wish there was time to talk about additional details that we could have put on these figures. I'll save that for another video. Um, you don't want to make them too busy. I think the towel's fine. I think that's fine. Uh, I think the little Nike symbol on the shoes will be fine. Of course, that the collar is fine, and the 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 Riddell plate on the helmet's fine. Of course, the chin strap's fine. Uh, and everything we did with the arms, too much more, might be a little distracting and confusing. Well, looks like I almost went out of the border with the red dot, and the blue dot's too close to the the, the, the black line there. Here's one more. OK, 
Okay. That looks fine. Yeah. Like we kind of saved the best for last year. That was not intentional, but well, there we go. Now, the next thing I may do is just go ahead and touch up the uh, base plates with some Viper Green Tudor paint because most of them need it on the corners where I've just been, you know, handling this. I didn't see much of any details or any paints on the figures that needs to be reapplied. So, what's left? Uh, like I said, the uh, swoosh on the yellow and white shoes on some of these figures, which I bet that takes no more than 30 minutes. And then the uh, shoulder stripes with a Sharpie marker. Uh, of course, I'm going to take my own sweet time on those to make sure I do a really good job. Hopefully a better job than I did on the test figure, which is okay, but I would like to do better than that. And uh, then I'll let them dry for probably a week, and then I'm going to apply the uh, brush sealer once I'm completely satisfied with each figure. And, and, and let that set for a few days and then get started on the decals. And then, ultimately, the face masks. And then, <laughs> move on to the next painting project. <laughs> In this never-ending uh, quest for, uh, uh, well, enlightenment. Uh, uh, the human test to see just how far I can push my own abilities in painting these things and, and detailing them. That's what this was all about. And I'm very happy with the results. Okay, well, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. I'll uh, talk to you again real soon. Take care.